what I've tended to see in people coming to see me, that most people that come to see me have already been to see a GP, an orthopedic surgeon, whoever it might be. And it's it's almost like they've been it's been suggested to them that their pain is a one way street, that it doesn't get any better, that they're kind of, you know, they've got it for the rest of their life. Maybe if you have surgery, that might sort it out if you're lucky, but there's risks involved mm. with the surgery. Or we can just give you painkillers to take for the rest of your life. And and it's not a one-way street, as you were saying, right, that you can heal from these things. I mean, in 2013, I had a complete herniation of my L4-5 disc and a quite severe bulge of my L5-S1. I had severe sciatica, as well as being painful, shooting pains and numbness in this all at the same time. I had a drop foot. I could barely walk. But it, it took me 20 months to rehabilitate because it was it was a pretty serious injury. Like I probably don't have a nucleus anymore in the in the disc of the L45. Probably that got, you know, as you mentioned, the macrophages probably gob gobbled that up. <laughs> um, but I'm completely functional again. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And I'm lifting heavy weights, I'm playing tennis, I'm I'm not restricted in any and any I'd way. say a 20 month recovery, whilst it's long at the time, mm. actually to me sounds quite quick because yeah. probably because you know the bigger picture of pain. Whereas mm. a lot of people that come in, you know, like you said, they go to the doctors, the consultants, and this, and they're sort of led to believe that this is this is it, this is going to mm. be it for life. Um, and they lose hope. And Peter O'Sullivan recently interviewed on the um, Rongan Chastity podcast was said you've got to have hope if mm. you don't have hope you can't get better yeah and with hope you can recover and I'd yeah. say did you did you get this injury whilst you were a, a, already a practitioner yeah 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 and do you think that that accelerated your healing having that knowledge yeah without without a doubt without a doubt yeah. because, I mean it was interesting because by that point I'd been <clears throat> helping people rehabilitate from lower back injuries particularly disc injuries for how long had it been 12 years i think somewhere around that 12 years and i was actually embarrassed because i thought i teach people how to recover from this so you know the same thing you would do to recover would actually help preventing it from happening in the first place right but what i found was is that i actually learned more about disc injuries by going through the process myself than I did from all my amazing training that I've had. And, yeah. and, it, and the one the one thing I would say is, again, because of my knowledge, the first thing I knew was is that because it was a disc injury and discs have very little blood supply, I knew they take a long time to heal. So whereas over the years, you know, playing lots of sport, I've had the odd muscle injury here and there, and they heal very quickly in me. Like I could, I once pulled my latissimus dorsi three days later i was back in the gym and playing tennis wow. i can i know i can heal very quickly or at least I could when i was younger yeah but, but i knew a disc was going to take a long time so there would i would go through days weeks even months and i think it's no progress but in the back of my mind i just kept saying it's going to take time just keep doing the right thing so you know i wasn't just doing things to make my body physically stronger in terms of working on the muscular system, making sure I had good muscle balance around my joints, those kind of things. But I was making sure I was absolutely nailing my nutrition, my hydration, I was getting good sleep, I was meditating. You know, I was doing all those things because I knew that they were going to contribute to my healing. But the one thing I always had in the back of my mind was that it was going to get better. Yeah. Even though it was taking a long time, you had that hope. I had this inner knowing that I was going to be fine, even though there were times when I was really petrified that I wouldn't be able to do my job properly, that I wouldn't be able to get back playing tennis, that I wouldn't be able to lift heavy weights in the gym. And it was really challenging my identity of who I was. Right. I mean, I, I can remember. So luckily for me, this happened in June. So the weather was hot. But I can remember limping down my road to get a bus because I couldn't get in a car. So I couldn't drive because I couldn't even sit down. So I was hobbling along the road to get a bus to go to the GP to get a referral for an MRI. 
because I kind of I kind of knew what I'd done, but I just wanted to confirm what it was. And I was walking down my road and I just felt so vulnerable because I thought someone could come up to me now. It could be an eight year old child and they could mug me and I wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. I had no strength. I had, I was, you know, full of pain. I couldn't run. I could barely walk. I could definitely couldn't fight anyone. And it was it was quite scary. And it made me think, wow, I now understand how old people feel when they're really frail because they must feel vulnerable because they can't protect themselves. And that that fear and the scariness, the worry, that all adds into pain. Yeah. And um, some of Lorimer's work is, you know, he, he talks about like a footballer injuring his hand won't be as painful as him mm. injuring his foot yeah. because he really needs his foot for his yeah. career. 